Have you ever wondered how Joseph handled the revelation that his future wife was pregnant even before they had lived together? Imagine the depth of emotions and thoughts that must have crossed his mind. The Bible is full of characters whose lives offer us a rich tapestry of lessons and wisdom. Among them, some stand out for their ability to provide profound insights through their examples of life and character. Today, we will explore the story of one such character, Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus Christ. In his journey of faith and obedience, we find an inexhaustible source of inspiration and guidance for our own lives. Joseph, the carpenter from Nazareth, holds a transcendental importance due to his lineage. Described in the Bible as a direct descendant of King David, Joseph carries in his blood the royal lineage of Israel, a fact of profound theological and prophetic relevance. In the Gospel of Matthew, we find a meticulously traced genealogy that connects Joseph to Abraham and David, culminating in Jesus, Matthew 1 to 16 This genealogical record is not merely historical, it fulfills the prophecies of the Old Testament and legitimizes Jesus as the promised Messiah. As we read in Jeremiah 23 5, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Luke also presents a genealogy that, while containing some differences in details, reinforces the Davidic connection, Luke 3 23-38. This repetition in the Gospels underscores the importance of establishing Jesus as the legitimate heir to the promises made to David. In Isaiah 11 1, it is written, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. This passage points directly to the Messiah who would come from the lineage of Jesse, David's father. Therefore, Joseph's genealogy is a vital link that connects Jesus to ancient prophecies and messianic expectations, conferring legitimacy upon him as the awaited Christ. Additionally, other prophecies emphasize the importance of the Davidic lineage. In 2 Samuel 7 12-13, God promises David, When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. These words echo through the centuries, finding fulfillment in Jesus through Joseph, his earthly father. Joseph's connection to David also meets the messianic expectations of the Jewish people, who awaited a liberator from the house of David. This expectation is clearly expressed in Matthew 21 9, when the crowds shout, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Recognizing Jesus as the Son of David acknowledges his messianic legitimacy and his role in the divine plan of redemption. The betrothal between Joseph and Mary transcends the modern idea of a simple engagement, it was a sacred and legally recognized union in Jewish society, with profound spiritual and social implications. The Gospel of Matthew narrates the betrothal of Mary to Joseph, emphasizing the seriousness of this union, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit, Matthew 1:18. In this context, betrothal was as binding as marriage itself. Breaking this commitment would result in public scandal and serious legal complications. Jewish law stipulated that infidelity during betrothal was treated with the same severity as adultery after marriage. When Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant, he faced a profound moral and spiritual dilemma. The biblical narrative offers an intimate glimpse into Joseph's character. Matthew 1:19 states, And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. This verse reveals not only Joseph's righteousness but also his compassion and desire to protect Mary. In a time when discovering a pregnancy outside of marriage could result in severe punishment, even death by stoning, Deuteronomy 22 23-24, Joseph's decision to leave her quietly reflects his kindness and humanity. Joseph was at a crossroads, with his faith and love for Mary put to the test. He had the right, according to the law, to expose her publicly, but he chose a path of mercy. This choice illustrates the depth of his justice and compassion, qualities that would make him a suitable guardian for the Messiah. Joseph's decision to protect Mary, even before receiving the angel's message, 
demonstrates the essence of a just man whose obedience and faith become more evident in the following pages of Scripture. The discovery of Mary's pregnancy, conceived by the Holy Spirit, places Joseph in a unique position in the biblical narrative. Not only must he deal with the shock and potential shame, but he must also fully trust the divine message he soon receives. The Bible highlights Joseph's internal struggle, making him an example of unwavering faith and obedience to God. His response not only safeguards Mary but also prepares the way for the birth of the Savior, fulfilling Old Testament prophecies. Joseph's doubt about how to proceed in light of Mary's unexpected pregnancy is understandable and deeply human. Imagine a just and devout man confronted with the news that his betrothed is pregnant before cohabitation. In his righteousness, Joseph ponders the best way to handle the situation without exposing Mary to public disgrace. Jewish law was severe in such cases, potentially leading to the death penalty by stoning, Deuteronomy 22 23-24. However, Joseph's character is revealed in his intention to divorce her quietly to protect her. In Matthew 1:20, we read that while Joseph considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The appearance of the angel marks a turning point in the narrative. This supernatural moment not only clarifies the situation for Joseph but also sets him on a divine mission. The angel, God's messenger, explains the true nature of Mary's conception, dispelling all of Joseph's doubts, she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins, Matthew 1 21. This verse is crucial because the name Jesus means the Lord saves, thus clearly defining Jesus' mission from the beginning. The divine intervention through the angel not only reassures Joseph but also positions him as the guardian of the Messiah, a responsibility of enormous spiritual weight. Joseph's response upon waking is immediate and full of obedience, reflecting his deep faith and submission to the divine plan. Matthew 1 24-25 describes Joseph's decisive action. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, he took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. This obedience is remarkable. Joseph not only accepts Mary as his wife but also assumes the responsibility of caring for the Son of God, ensuring the prophecy is fulfilled. Joseph's commitment to follow divine guidance, even in circumstances that challenge human understanding, highlights his righteousness and devotion. He becomes a model of faith, trusting completely in God and acting according to his instructions without hesitation. Joseph's willingness to obey the angel's command and protect Mary and Jesus, even before fully understanding the divine plan, places him as an example of fidelity and spiritual courage. The story of Joseph and Mary's journey to Bethlehem begins with an event of historical magnitude, the decree of Caesar Augustus. This Roman emperor ordered a census to be taken of the entire Roman world, setting in motion the fulfillment of another prophecy and marking the beginning of a journey that would lead to the birth of the Savior in Bethlehem. To register in the city of his ancestors, Joseph had to travel from Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem, the city of David. This journey was not only a civil obligation but also a divine fulfillment intertwined with ancient prophecies. The trip to Bethlehem was arduous and significant. Joseph, a righteous and obedient man, took Mary, his pregnant wife. The decision to travel under such circumstances demonstrated Joseph's faith and determination to follow the law and divine commands. The journey was about 150 kilometers long, likely made on foot or with the help of a pack animal, through mountainous terrain and unpredictable weather. Upon arriving in Bethlehem, a place of great historical and prophetic significance, Joseph and Mary faced the reality of overcrowding caused by the census. Unable to find space in the inns, they took refuge in a stable. Here, in humble and simple circumstances, the most magnificent birth in history occurred, the birth of Jesus Christ. This simplicity starkly contrasted with the majesty of the event. In Micah 5 verse 2, we read the prophecy, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. The Gospel of Luke tells us that after the birth, angels announced the event to nearby shepherds, who quickly came to worship the newborn, Luke 2 8-20.
This simple, wondrous scene is rich with spiritual significance. The shepherds, among the humblest of society, were the first to receive the good news, symbolizing that the salvation brought by Jesus is for all without distinction. Joseph's presence during this crucial moment cannot be underestimated. He not only provided protection and care for Mary and the newborn Jesus but also embodied silent faith and obedience. Joseph, who safely led his family to Bethlehem and cared for them during this sacred event, represents steadfast faith and readiness to serve the divine plan, regardless of circumstances. After Jesus' birth, an event of great joy, the narrative quickly takes a darker turn with the imminent threat from Herod. This king, known for his cruelty and paranoia, felt threatened upon hearing from the Magi about the birth of the king of the Jews and planned to eliminate this new rival. The Bible tells us that Joseph, warned in a dream, received an urgent message from an angel of the Lord, Get up, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him, Matthew 2:13. This heavenly warning underscored the severity of the threat and the divine readiness to protect the Savior. Obediently, Joseph got up during the night and, in a hasty escape, took Mary and the baby Jesus to Egypt. This nighttime journey, filled with urgency and danger, showed Joseph's unwavering faith in fulfilling divine commands. Matthew 2 14-15 describes, So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. This citation from Hosea 11:1 1 reflects the continuity of the divine plan, where even the flight to Egypt is a preordained part of Jesus' mission. Life in Egypt must have been full of challenges and uncertainties for Joseph and his family. Settling in a foreign land with different language and customs required adaptability and resilience. However, the biblical narrative does not detail this period, suggesting that even amid adversity, divine protection never left them. Jesus' presence, the Son of God, in Egyptian soil, fulfilled Hosea's prophecy and underscored God's faithfulness in protecting and guiding those who are part of His redemptive plan. This time in Egypt also symbolized a parallel with the history of the people of Israel. Just as Israel found refuge in Egypt and was later called back to the Promised Land, Jesus, as the true Israel, recapitulated this journey. After Herod's death, the immediate threat to Jesus' life disappeared, but the next step for the Holy Family still required divine guidance. In a moment of uncertainty, Joseph again received a heavenly message giving him clarity and direction. Matthew 2 20 recounts, After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, Take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. This second vision not only confirmed God's continued protection but also reinforced Joseph's importance as the chosen guardian to guide and protect the young Savior's life. Joseph's readiness to follow divine direction without question revealed his deep faith and obedience. Without hesitation, he prepared his family for the long journey back to the land of Israel. This return was not just a physical move but symbolized a new chapter in the divine plan, where every step was guided by God's providence. Joseph's obedience reflected that of Abraham, who also followed God's voice into an unknown future, confident in the divine promise. Upon returning to Israel, Joseph faced a new dilemma. Although Herod's threat had passed, his son Archelaus now ruled Judea and was known for his cruelty. Matthew 2 23 tells us, but when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, that he would be called a Nazarene. Nazareth, a small and humble village in Galilee, became the setting where Jesus would grow and prepare for his ministry. This seemingly insignificant location fulfilled another prophecy and shaped Jesus' identity as a Nazarene, a designation that echoed through the Gospels and beyond. The humility of Nazareth sharply contrasted with the grandeur expected of a king, highlighting the paradoxical nature of God's kingdom, where the last shall be first. Living in Nazareth also reflects divine providence in choosing seemingly insignificant places and people for great purposes. Galilee, a region often looked down upon by many, became the birthplace of Jesus' ministry, 
emphasizing the inclusiveness and universality of the gospel message. Life in Nazareth offered Jesus an environment of simplicity, hard work, and piety, elements that shaped his character and prepared him for his redemptive mission. Nazareth is mentioned several times in the scriptures as a despised place, can anything good come from Nazareth? John 1 46. Yet, it is precisely this humble place that God chose to raise and prepare his son. Jesus' life, even in his formative years, was marked by events that underscored his divine identity and mission. When Jesus was twelve years old, the family made their annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration, according to Jewish tradition, Luke 2 41-42. This religious practice was not just a cultural obligation but an expression of faith and devotion to God. For Joseph and Mary, taking Jesus to Jerusalem was a way of educating him in the ways of the Lord, as prescribed in the Law of Moses. The journey from Nazareth to Jerusalem was long and arduous, covering about 120 kilometers of mountainous terrain. However, the spiritual reward of worshipping at the Jerusalem temple made the effort worthwhile. During Passover, Jerusalem buzzed with activity as pilgrims from all parts arrived to celebrate Israel's liberation from Egypt. This vibrant and spiritually enriching environment was where Jesus, still a boy, began to show signs of his divine mission. After the festivities, Joseph and Mary began their journey back to Nazareth, assuming Jesus was among the many familiar travelers in their group. However, at the end of a day's travel, they realized with horror that Jesus was missing. The anguish of losing a child in a large city is palpable and human, reflecting the deep care and love of Joseph and Mary. Luke 2 verses 43-46 recounts their frantic search, thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. The search lasted three days, each moment filled with anxiety and despair. This desperate situation reveals the humanity and dedication of Jesus' earthly parents, they spared no effort to find their son, searching every corner of Jerusalem, asking and looking tirelessly. Finally, on the third day, they found Jesus in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. This event is a powerful statement about Jesus' identity and mission. Luke 2 verses 46-47 describes, After three days they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. Jesus' ability to engage with the teachers of the law, his understanding of the scriptures, and the wisdom he demonstrated were clear signs of his divine nature. When Mary expressed her concern and relief at finally finding him, Jesus replied, Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Luke 2 verse 49. This response, both enigmatic and revealing, underscores Jesus' growing awareness of his divine identity and mission. He knew that his true filiation was with God the Father and that his mission on earth was just beginning. This event in the temple is not merely a story about a lost and found boy, it is a powerful declaration about Jesus' mission and the divine preparation taking place. Through the search and the finding in the temple, we glimpse the future ministry of Jesus, characterized by divine wisdom and the fulfillment of God's promises. Joseph, often silent and humble in biblical narratives, plays a crucial role in shaping the young Jesus. Known as a carpenter, Joseph practiced a respected and honorable profession, marked by skill, patience, and dedication. In a society where manual labor was highly valued, being a carpenter meant being a pillar of the community, providing essential means for building and maintaining homes and tools. In Mark 6 verse 3, we find a direct reference to Jesus as the carpenter, the son of Mary, indicating clearly that Joseph passed on his skills and trade to Jesus. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? This verse not only acknowledges Jesus as a community member with a specific profession but also highlights Joseph's direct influence on his life. The carpentry trade would have begun early, with Jesus learning the craft alongside Joseph in the workshop, learning to work with wood, create, build, and repair. This practical training not only prepared Jesus for everyday life but also carried profound symbolism for his future ministry. Carpentry, with its tools and techniques, required precision, patience, and an eye for detail, 
qualities that would be reflected in Jesus' ministry, demonstrating a deep understanding of human needs and a unique ability to transform lives through his teachings and miracles. The influence of Joseph on Jesus' moral and spiritual education is immeasurable. Although the scriptures provide few explicit details about their interactions, we can infer much about Joseph's character and lasting impact. Described as righteous in Matthew 1 verse 19, Joseph exemplified obedience to God's law, humility, and integrity. These values would not have gone unnoticed by the young Jesus. Daily life in Joseph and Mary's home would have been filled with implicit and explicit teachings. Through religious festivities, Torah readings, and daily prayers, Joseph instilled in Jesus a deep respect and love for tradition and scripture. Joseph's humility also would have been a significant influence. He accepted his role as Jesus' earthly father without hesitation, promptly obeying divine directions, even when these required great sacrifices, such as the flight to Egypt or the return to Nazareth. This humility and willingness to serve without seeking recognition is a value that Jesus embodied in his ministry, constantly putting others' needs above his own. Life in Nazareth was marked by simplicity, hard work, and deep devotion to God. As a carpenter, Joseph played a fundamental role in supporting the family. His trade, though humble, was essential to the community, providing necessary furniture, tools, and structures for daily life. In Matthew 13 verse 55, we see a reference to Joseph's trade, isn't this the carpenter's son? Joseph's daily routine involved long hours in the workshop, where Jesus began learning the trade early on. Joseph's patient work with wood symbolizes not only practical preparation but also the spiritual and moral model for the young Jesus. Luke 2 verses 39-40 offers a glimpse of Jesus' childhood, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. The house of Joseph and Mary was a place of fervent religious practice. As devout Jews, Joseph and Mary faithfully observed Jewish traditions and laws, creating an environment of intense spirituality and devotion. They regularly participated in religious festivities like Passover and followed the practices prescribed by the Law of Moses. Deuteronomy 6 verses 6-7 states, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Following this commandment, Joseph would have instilled the teachings of the scriptures in Jesus from an early age. He taught Jesus about faith, the importance of prayer, and the observance of Jewish laws and festivals. The religious education provided by Joseph and Mary helped shape Jesus' understanding of his divine identity and mission. In Luke 4 verse 16, we see that as an adult, Jesus, went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. This passage indicates that attending synagogue and participating in scripture readings was part of his routine from childhood. Religious traditions and teachings were not merely rituals for Joseph, they were living expressions of faith and obedience to God. Despite his physical absence in later gospel accounts, Joseph's influence is deeply felt. Described as a righteous man in Matthew 1 verse 19, Joseph left a legacy of justice, humility, and obedience that permeates Jesus' life and ministry. The moral and spiritual training he provided Jesus is evident in Jesus' teachings and actions. Therefore, even though Joseph's name does not appear in the accounts of Jesus' public ministry, his influence permeates every aspect of Jesus' life and teachings. Joseph, with his justice, humility, and obedience, prepared Jesus to fulfill his redemptive mission. Few characters in the Bible receive the distinction of being called righteous. Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, is one of those rare characters. In Matthew 1 verse 19, we read, Because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. This title, righteous, is not merely a casual description of his character, it is a profound reflection of his faith, obedience, and integrity. To be righteous in the biblical context implies living in complete conformity with God's will, manifested in obedience to divine law and love for others. In summary, Joseph the righteous is a figure of immense importance in the biblical narrative. 
His faith, humility, dedication, and courage not only shaped Jesus' life but also offer us a powerful example of how to live a life of true justice and obedience to God. The story of Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, is a powerful lesson of faith, obedience, and humility. In a world filled with uncertainties and challenges, Joseph's life reminds us of the importance of fully trusting in God, even when the path ahead is unclear. His willingness to follow divine directions without hesitation, to accept responsibility with courage, and to live with integrity provides us with a clear model of how we should conduct our own lives. Joseph shows us that true greatness does not lie in recognition or power but in silently serving God's plan with dedication and love. His life is an invitation for all of us, regardless of our circumstances, to embrace our faith with the same firmness, acting with justice and compassion in all our actions. Inspired by Joseph, we are called to live with deep humility, trusting that our role, no matter how modest it may seem, can have an eternal impact on God's grand plan. And today, if you are tired of living a life without Christ, I want to extend a loving invitation to you, begin a new life with just a small act that can transform your life forever. Comment below, I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my only and sufficient Lord and Savior of my life. Until next time.